Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to Good Measure. Today, my name is David, and we have David Cotton, Senior Vice President and Chief Data Scientist at Intech Investment Management LLC. He's here today to talk with us about micro predictions and the R language. Mr. Cotton, thank you for being here with us today. Do you mind quickly introducing yourselves to those in the audience who may not be familiar with your work and with micro predictions? All right, uh, David, thanks for having me on. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, my name is uh, Peter Cotton. I work at Intech Investments and I do some open source work uh, under the handle micro prediction. Uh, my background is in uh, quantitative finance. I've worked in the industry for about 20 years. All right. Um, so for the audience, um, what, I, what exactly is micro predictions, micro, micro predicting? And is it a sort of machine learning um, technology? Is it related to AI? What exactly does micro, micro predictions do? All right, question. Microprediction is a platform that tries to match uh, people who need live quantities predicted with those who think they can predict them well. So it is not any specific, um, you know, machine learning or statistical technology. Uh, it is more of a, uh, a almost like a live exchange, if you will. So it's a, it's a data interface. And, uh, if you have, let's say, uh, you know, traffic times, uh, which are being reported every 10 minutes, then you can publish that data to the site. And uh, if you keep doing that, then pretty soon algorithms will find their own ways to your stream that you create. And so you'll get automated predictions of anything you want. And so in regards to micro predictions, uh, why is it that um, the website has begun to crowdsource solutions for micro predicting? Is the goal of micro predictions to run thousands of tests through various networks to sort of sort out the best methods and programs for micro predicting? Well, you could think of it this way. Uh, typically, when someone has something they need predicted, there's a data scientists involved and the humans bring the techniques to the problem. So micro prediction, it's a little bit different. There are thousands of different uh, problems and the algorithms find their own way. Mm -hmm. So uh, for instance, uh, you might have an algorithm that's particularly good at predicting noisy time series and it will look across all of the different time series that are currently on the uh, on the platform and perhaps it will try its hand at predicting one or two of them and if it does well great it'll keep predicting them and uh, accruing credits and if it doesn't perhaps it'll move on to something else all right and so um micro predicting is has been a, is a really good tool for us to predict things with um, recurring data sets. How do you think this technology will impact the crypto industry as it's the blockchain and new technologies? And how do you think um, it'll be applied to this sort of industry? I could give you an example. Uh, right now, there are some streams on the micro prediction platform where algorithms are challenged with predicting the distribution of uh, fairly short-term price changes in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also challenged separately with trying to predict uh, the, uh, the changes in portfolios comprised of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Mm -hmm. and, uh, based on that, it's possible to infer a reasonable uh, balance of the two to invest in. That's just one little example. Uh, but just about anything that's instrumented in real time uh, is something you could predict if you want to. So mm -hmm. this is about trying to make prediction uh, easy, trying to make it essentially free and, uh, and therefore hopefully ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. And so um, about a few more recent events, um, micro predictions has had its foundations laid on in Python. 
However, in a recent LinkedIn post, you sort of set your eyes on our language as a tool that might sort of surpass Python in terms of um, its ability to sort of win out in uh, usage on micro predictions. Could you explain the thought process behind that? Um, and how does um, the R language sort of beat out Python in a sense? Uh, well, I would put it this way. That micro prediction is a data interface. There's an API. And so algorithms can be written in any language, you know, Python, uh, Julia, C++ if you want, and so forth. I anticipated that uh, Python would be popular. And I put a little more effort into providing a more of a fully fledged uh, Python client for the system than I did with other languages. Uh, so I was a little surprised, to be perfectly honest, to see uh, the R community, to give them a shout out, uh, performing really well mm -hmm. on this platform. It's not entirely surprising. R has been around for longer than Python. It has an extremely rich ecosystem, uh, mm -hmm. of course. And there's quite a few methods that are available in R that are not yet available in the Python ecosystem. So uh, it's uh, perhaps surprising to some people who I think believe that Python has long since overtaken R, at least in this particular experiment, that's not yet the case. Do you think this might be because um, the R language is maybe a bit more capable in a sense for statistic anal statistical analysis and how it's sort of structured and compared in comparison to Python? Or do you think this might be because of the R language community that has sort of set their eyes on micro predictions? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I haven't thought a lot about uh, you know, the, the filtering aspect of this. And uh, you know, if people know R, um, there's probably a good chance that they, they know a thing or two about statistics. Um, it's not always the case in, in Python. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably don't want to get into a debate about which currently is the better ecosystem to do prediction in. I would prefer to simply provide a data interface. And uh, one of the things that's pleased me is that I've been able to write algorithms in Python, which happens to be my preference, but other people write algorithms in R and the combination of those algorithms on the micro prediction platform can actually be quite powerful. And for those in my audience who might be very interested in coding and might want to pick up micro predictions, what are some things that you would tell them? What, what are some things that you'd sort of push or recommend them to do when starting out on this micro predictions platform? Yeah, I mean, at microprediction.com, we have uh, a number of you know, structured tutorials that can help people get going. Um, you can uh, create your own identity, which is sort of equivalent to registering just by opening a Colab notebook and running it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can walk through some of the examples. It's fairly simple on the Python side because you can run what we call the default crawler, which is an algorithm that just you know has some built-in algorithm and, and tries to predict streams. So you can just run that unmodified um, if you want, just to get going. And then you can derive from that micro crawler class and uh, inject your own ideas about how to predict things into it. Mm -hmm. so. And so for those who might not be too familiar with coding, um, how would you go about learning coding today like there's so much resources now and there's so much people on the web doing tutorials and recommending this way or learning these languages first what would you do if you were to totally relearn coding that's a great question i think it depends whether people already know an existing language or whether they're completely new to to coding mm -hmm. um, and there's resources for both. I've uh, actually tried to create some pages at microprediction.com, which uh, can introduce people to some free resources for learning Python, a mixture of courses, um, 
which seem to be quite popular. Uh, some focused on just Python and some focused on Python uh, used in more of a data science context. And, uh, and I would say, you know, it's fun to, to learn by doing something. So we've actually had people who have uh, been new to Python and they've actually, you know, won some of the prizes uh, in micro prediction because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they just took a, a, an existing algorithm and, and modified it a little bit and launched it. Uh, so hopefully this provides sort of a, a fun way for people to, to learn coding and uh, win some beer money at the same time. All right, sweet. That's it for today. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Anything else you would like to shout out? Uh, I would, I've mentioned that we have a, a Slack community of about 600 people interested in time series analysis. So um, again, if you go to microprediction.com, you should be able to find the, the Slack invite and uh, feel free to reach out. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.